Ah. All right, let's take a break, and we'll be back right after these words with Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> Back with the Howard Stern Show. Jackie's uh, new CD out, live at the Philadelphia Funny Bone, uh, 1-800-323-5464, 10 bucks plus $3 shipping and handling, Saturday night. He'll be over at the Club in a, April 16th in Sayreville, New Jersey. For information, call 516-922-WINE. Hey, hi, Gil. Hi. Hi. Gilly? Hi, Gilly. Hi, Hi. Hi, Howie. <laughs> Glad you shaved for today's yeah. show. <laughs> you look really nice. Yes. Yeah. It's a shame I don't even drink. I wonder what age Gilbert started shaving. I bet it happened real late. Because he still doesn't know how. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's three weeks growth. Yeah. Hasn't been out of his apartment in a long time. Only comes out for plugs. Plugs and gigs. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah man. What are you, what are you yeah, been up man. to? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. He sits in that apartment with that lawn furniture <laughs> trying to get laid. That's what he's been up to. No, I gave up trying. Oh, you did? Yeah. So he really does nothing. What do you do? Seriously, do you like go out? Oh, terrible! I, I, you ever go to clubs and stuff and hang well, out? No. Gary used to see him at some parties and stuff. Yeah, he sometimes yeah. goes to like free parties. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's been pretty depressed ever since Bill Hicks and uh, Bill Hicks died. Yeah. yeah and, and Larry Amaros got uh, in trouble. <laughs> got in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Because I always feel for other comics. Did you hear about that? Oh yeah. Yes. Larry Amaros was this comedian. You know him, right? Yes. And uh, <laughs> did he ever try anything on you? Did he ever try to measure you? No, I'm really... In, I, I can't insulted? even get laid with it. <laughs> Not a, even Larry wanted He's a comedian. Even, went he's out, never grabbed my ass. He went out to Los Angeles, and uh, he... He got a job writing for Arsenio. So he says, hey, wait, wait a second. This is cool. I'm on the Paramount lot. I can meet some cool guys. I can run some scams. Yeah, I can run some scams out of this place. I can pretend I'm writing movies. I can pretend I'm doing sketches. So a whole bunch of guys uh, started complaining because Larry Amaros uh, called, you know, he put an ad in the paper and basically said, look, we're doing a sketch for Arsenio called Buttmaster. And, uh, Which like, I could really picture them doing. Yeah, right. Like that would really happen. And all these actors showed up. And we know all actors are desperate, so yeah. <laughs> they basically all pull down their pants. They so would do anything. Larry there's said, always nudity on the Arsenio yeah, show. Yeah, right. And Larry, yeah. said, Larry Amaro said, well, look, we have to measure your buttocks <laughs> and make sure it's flat for the uh, sketch because you want flat buttocks. So anyway. It's a camera thing. He started measuring them and stuff, and now all the actors are suing because they say they feel very stupid. <laughs> well, how do you get money With good for reason. That? How do you get money for being stupid? <laughs> Either you be my producer, or you get measured by Larry Amaros. Someone measured my ass. I feel stupid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was for the Arsenio show. How many times have you seen on the Arsenio show, like, people's naked bodies? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of naked guys bending over on the Arsenio show. So now, 15 more guys have come forward after hearing about it on our show. <laughs> they heard That's you could sue. That's why show does a good service. That's why this show is great. <laughs> That's why society is so great. Like, as soon as people hear about it, they want to sue. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> other guys are suing? We'll sue, too. It's great. Everyone has a suit. <laughs> yeah, I pulled out my pants too and bent over. Oh yeah, I think I yeah. uh, was. Um, I, I think I was measured by Larry Amaros also, Robin. I remember. Uh, totally Kate slipped measured. my mind. Yeah, didn't it happen to you, Gilbert? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forgot all about it. Remember that time you need to be measured for that? Oh, Can't say that. Right. Can't say that. Okay. All right. On my ass. Can you? Somebody say shoved a, a ruler on your ass. On my ass. Okay, good. That's fine. <laughs> it's just like one word. Right. <laughs> so anyway, didn't Eddie Murphy measure your sphincter for uh, <laughs> that movie you were in? <laughs> oh, I guess not. Different guy. Anyway, so the point is... Well, I said I was an accountant. I had to show my ass. Now a lot of guys are coming forward <laughs> and saying that their genitals were measured. Well, yeah, but that was for a different thing. That was for yeah. a movie. Yeah, oh, that Larry wow. was working on at a Paramount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for a movie, I'll show my genitals. So, so it's your ass for TV. And Did you hear what he said, though? This was yesterday's story, no. Robin. Did. So he said to him, look, if you're going to be in the movie, we need to see you aroused and also flaccid. <laughs> Seriously. I, so he gave him dirty magazines and, and let the guy... And tissue. Oh. <laughs> so it's a very thorough... What do you think of that? Isn't that wild? Yeah, it's... it's for Bill and Ted's excellent adventure, we yeah. had an erection shot. Yeah, we <laughs> we decided to make it R-rated. <laughs> it won't be too dirty. We need you nude, spread eagled on the parallel bars, <laughs> so we can see what's going on. It's a gymnastic movie. Yeah. 
It's Beethoven 3. <laughs> we need an erection. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're shooting this movie called Beethoven 3, and we need to see men aroused in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> men with flat buttocks around. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Now, your genitals are if you want a speaking girl. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So evidently he's in trouble. Uh, gee, I wonder why. Yeah. You know that guy? Did oh, you yeah. ever work with him? Like, did you ever appear for somebody? Oh, yeah. 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 You never had a problem. Yeah, never made a Isn't it amazing, like, Gilbert... Like the most like, degrading thing in the world. Here's a guy <laughs> who's just taking strangers off the street and measuring their, their buttocks so he can see their ass. Yeah. And Gilbert, all those years working with Larry Amaros, Gets off Scott Fritz. never once. Never even tried to hold my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have this feeling like, what's wrong with me? Yeah. Do you I feel rejected in yeah, a way? Yeah, I can't get laid with guys even. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> a loser. <laughs> what's Larry Amaros look like? I, I don't think I've ever seen him. Um, probably He's, he's built probably like me. Oh, really? <laughs> Gilbert got the idea to put some ads in the newspaper. Uh, yes, I'm uh, making a movie. Guys with flat genitals. Right. We need you to be measured. Yeah. If <laughs> you could come over and uh, we want to take a lark. We'll measure you and we'll do it in a very professional way. You'll have a magazine and tissue. That's really, yeah, exactly. this is all on the up and up. I do this all the time. Do you imagine like Larry Amaros walks over to you and says, listen, we need to see you around. So here's a magazine and tissues. Yes. Wouldn't you be a, a little bit suspicious? Well, well, the tissues are in case you start crying because you're so happy you got the job. <laughs> <laughs> Robin, let's take a break and do the rest of the news as oh, if there really is anything else that's yeah, important. Right. We'll be back right after this. We're back with the Howard Stern Show. And by the way, Caroline's April 6th. That's where you can see Gilbert Gottfried. You can also uh, hear him as the voice of the Beatle in the feature film Thumbelina. He's getting a lot of that cartoon work. Yeah. Nobody wants to see Gil. Yeah. <laughs> this one, he hears his voice. That's why we have him on our radio show, not our television project. And uh, he'll also uh, soon be heard again as the parrot in Disney's director video, The Return of Jaffer. Uh, Jafar. Jafar. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. Arabic. You know, you oh, I get see. this right. April 4th. Um, April 4th, Gilbert... Uh, uh, I guess Jay Leno threw him a bone is having him on the Tonight oh, Show. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Joe Clinton was in the nose today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's into the politics, Jay Leno. Yeah. yeah. Joe Clinton was in the nose today. How about this health policy? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Wallace, health policy. What, what is this thing? You know, it's, uh, you know, he's changing the whole policy. And how about his wife? How's that? Where did she come from, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love political monologues. Yeah. Hey, how about this Lorena Bombard, huh? What is he, nuts or something? I don't know. Crazy. I guess it's tough doing that day in and day out. <laughs> what are you going to do? What Gotta are you going to do? The hey, the same face was back in the papers. So you were uh, going on The Tonight Show. Do you know who you're going to be on with yet? No. Do you have to uh, like go through a whole pre interview Are you going to do stand-up, or are you going to like sit down on the couch? I have no idea. I think I think on the couch... You know, he acts so nonchalant, Gilbert. Like he he, you know he's sitting he there knows. worried about it. Yeah. I'm there, like, typing oh, it out. Oh, I better do oh, good. Oh, 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 I'll never get any more what, gigs. What story shall I tell? Yeah. Oh, oh. i got to have good stories if I'm doing couch. Yeah, do you have to, like, do you have to prepare your stories? <laughs> so Jay will know what you're going to talk about? Like on Letterman, you have to prepare your stories yes. so Dave will know what to ask you. Um, Dave will lead, you will follow. Right. When you come out, <laughs> when, uh, when what do Dave asks this. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dave will say... Well, he can ask me about my movie. Oh, uh... Well, that's what not funny. To say? <laughs> what do you want to well, say? Well, when you say that, what's Dave going to say? Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so so he'll ask you about your movie, and what are you going to answer? <laughs> uh, well, I don't well, well, know. It <laughs> depends on what funny, he asks me about but it. But what, Dave, what is Dave going to do? But do you have something funny to say about Thumbelina? Um, well, With the Beatle voice. Did, did, did you... Was there anything funny happening when you were making it? <laughs> Like any 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 funny anecdotes? <laughs> yeah, sure. And I don't mind telling to you over the phone. Yeah, <laughs> that's a funny kind of way to deliver all my yeah. stuff. Okay. And, and you say a joke is oh oh that, that's funny. That's very funny. That that's good. That's Dave good. wants to do a sit down with you, but um, he's got to know what to ask you now. Now give me like ten things, but Dave will get to four of the good ones. Okay. Mm. Now now uh, 
Oh, oh yeah, there was there was one time I didn't wear shoes. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. They okay, never left. Okay, this, yeah. this is the strongest stuff, so we'll go with this first. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go with you not wearing shoes. You know what I like, to? Now, I don't know, but I, I would imagine it's the same thing for you, because you don't really, like, script anything. Yeah. So what happens to me is I tell them some stuff on the phone, and then later that afternoon I'm on the show, and they go, okay, here's the questions Dave are going to ask you. Now, they're very general questions. It's not even like, how, what's the movie? Yeah, there's no word in it to Dave will, say, yeah, Dave will say, how are you doing? And you tell him that funny story. And I go, what funny story? <laughs> the one you told me on the phone this afternoon. I go, what did I tell you? I don't even know. This story about running for governor. Well, oh, you want me to talk about that? Yeah, but what why you was said. It, why wouldn't Dave say that? Why doesn't Dave just say, how, how is this you running for governor? Oh, no, 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 we don't do it like that. And then it gets like all confusing. By the time I get out there, I don't remember one thing I'm supposed to talk and, about. And then it's so planned out. And you're waiting for him to say... Tell me about your movie, and he says, "Tell me about your new movie," and you're totally <laughs> you're not sure which go, movie. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> is that is, what answer do I give to this one? Yeah, it's weird. But Leno doesn't seem. I, I know with Leno, they've demanded pre-interview, and I just avoid them. Yeah. And I won't do it. Really, you never pre-interview them? Never. Never. So you want to talk about your radio show? Hey Howard, I know you uh, you uh, avoided us on this pre-interview. He flops himself down on the couch, but uh, <laughs> you know it just helps me with things you want to talk about. I said, Jay, don't worry about. It. I'll bring up what I want to talk about. Just go along with me. Okay, but you know we'd be a lot more helpful. Well, I'm just trying to be helpful to you. Yeah, just yeah. To make you look good. Well, don't be so friggin' helpful, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you, you be helpful for yourself. I want to make sure you know anything you want to talk about. We yeah. just don't. Yeah, right. Yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But Letterman doesn't let you off the hook because he knows he's got the hot show. So yeah. it's like he can he can bust your balls so you can do the pre-interview. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is probably going on Conan O'Brien, you say, look, not only am I not doing a pre-interview, but I don't want Conan sitting next to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him destroying my image. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll go along yeah. with that. Sure. That's fine. Yeah, all right, we'll just put the, the fat sidekick next to you. <laughs> okay, fine. Do you want Conan to be in another room? <laughs> yeah, well, do you have something <laughs> yeah. specific you want to do? Yeah, I just yeah. need a whole hour to do my own stuff. Okay. All right, fine, okay. it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it used to be on um, the Dennis Miller show. They used to call me up and offer me entire hours really? to do whatever they I wanted. Really? interview you Yeah, they the said. Hour. Yeah, they'd oh. go, they'd go uh, no, not even that. They said, well, if you want to do some material, you want to do like a bit? And I, like, you could have oh, a whole hour. you could have the whole thing. I remember it was Jay Leno's going to be the first show that he was doing on The Tonight Show. And they wanted they wanted me to appear opposite him. Uh. And I said, well, I'm not going to do that because, you know, Dennis doesn't get high ratings. They said, well, we don't have to have Dennis there necessarily. Do you have any friends that would like to do a show? Yeah. <laughs> you mean they were going to chuck Dennis Miller then? <laughs> yeah, they might have let me just like, like, I, like Dennis would have introduced me and then it would have been my hour. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I mean, they were willing, they were willing to go <laughs> along with just about anything I wanted to do. It was unbelievable. I said, all right, I tell you what, I want Dennis Miller in another business. All right? Okay, okay, what line of business would you like him in? I'd like him to be a tailor, okay. all right? And let him just leave the building, and for the day, he's a tailor. Hi. All right. Hi. 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 As long as you'll be there, right? Yes. So I tell you what, I want to do an infomercial. Okay. Okay. What do you want to sell? <laughs> Vacuums. Okay. Good. 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 It's funny. <laughs> for a whole hour? <laughs> yep. A whole hour. We'll, we'll buy vacuums for you. Yeah. Good. Did you see what happened to Roberto Santiago in Cleveland? No. That's the guy who writes sometimes positive things about us and sometimes real negative yeah, things. Yeah, he's up and down. What happened to him? According to an uh, article by Radio Beat, which is from the Cleveland Scene magazine, Mouth hears that Roberto Santiago has been moved from the plain dealer's radio beat to the crime bureau. Oh, really? Could this be a demotion or a punishment for writing a letter to Playboy magazine extolling the virtues of Howard Stern? Santiago, whose opinion of Stern and his radio show seemed to change with the wind, wrote a letter to the Skin Mag praising their Stern interview. Stern read it on the air, basically bringing up the same question that Mouth just brought up. Whatever the reason for his reassignment, Santiago will now be listening to the police radio a lot more than any other radio station. I don't think he was... Could he have been demoted? For writing that letter? And by the way, that doesn't sound like a demotion to me. Being a radio reporter is the worst thing to be at a, re at a, a newspaper. See? <laughs> don't start. I'm not playing that game. I'll throw you right out of here. I got more hate mail about you. Oh, that's all he did. Though. Yeah, the last time. <laughs> Hey, by the way, this reporter, whoever writes the radio beat, brings up a great point. And Robin, I think you'll agree. So speaking of Howard, do you get as pissed off as we do when during your drive to work in the morning you've been hearing less and less of the Stern Show? Uh, WNCX's info block, the traffic weather, seems to be placed right during the part of the hour that most people are in their cars. 
Now, let me let me see. There's a lot of my stations. I just saw the station in uh, San Jose runs weather and traffic reports. Now, here in New York, I've never once done a weather right. forecast or a traffic report. I've got the highest ratings here. I got an 8.5. I'm number one. Why do these stations feel compelled? To, to I beg so in them. In other words, they're cutting into our time. They not extend the breaks. They, okay. they extend the breaks with informa information that is useless. Other stations do a better job of traffic. Forget the wet. Forget about everything. You don't need it. I tell these guys, not with me. I'm a unique situation. You don't need this information. Please, to all my stations listening, for, please, I'm begging you. Why wouldn't you listen to me? I know how to get ratings. Don't you trust me? Stop with that weather and traffic and the They're sports guy. I got a thing yesterday. Want me to cut promos? Introducing the sports guy on the San Jose. I station. hope you refused. Of course, <laughs> of course I did. What do you think I am? Oh my goodness! <laughs> Excuse oh, me, Gilbert. Yes, that's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, that's fine. Man, that was wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. It was a gurgling one. Somebody oh, got a chunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Call Larry Amro. See if I can borrow a tissue. <laughs> All right, Robin, let's do news. Come on. All right, all right, all right. Gilbert Gottfried to Caroline's April 6th. Get to here. All right. First of all, you know, this is the kind of thing I'm trying to keep up with because Lorena Bobbitt, we don't want her starting a trend. But. Watch, Gilbert will start getting laid and women will be cutting off men's penises <laughs> left and right. As soon as Gilbert starts getting yeah. action. <laughs> yeah. I told you about this woman the a while back. The Earth will leave the galaxy and make it like <laughs> right. A 36-year-old Los Angeles woman who snipped off her husband's testicles with a pair of scissors. And then measured them for the Tonight Show. <laughs> is the latest defendant to be elevated to America's feminist gallery of innocent manslashers. Women are doing it now to get famous. Cut off his testicles. Her husband oh. fell asleep in a drunken stupor after Ooh. a party where he allegedly flirted with other women. <laughs> ah. Oh, ah, did oh. you get like a, a wave? Yes. Yeah. Sir. I know you guys get real it's like, like physical went up to symptoms. my rib cage. because it, it's not like a vagina that is <laughs> internal. Everything is external. Mine is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we are. <laughs> but mine is. Well, mine is too. But it's just that you don't understand. Like a wave comes over it. I can't yeah. explain it. It's like a. Can you explain it? It's kind of like an electric shock. It's, it, it makes me gurgle. But you it's feel like, it right in the area. Yeah, it right, right in the, the area. Bones. Yeah, it goes right through there, that area. You feel it in the anus too. It's like oh. the whole bottom area. You do. Tightens. You yeah. do. You're it's absolutely right. Everything tightens up. up. It does. It's like a big. Your head. backside tightens up. Your everything tightens up on you. But go ahead. You, you, we didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> okay. Aurelia Macias. Hello there. Well, uh, hi there, I'm Matthews. <laughs> What's your name? Well, uh, I'm a Matthews. Oh, really a Matthews? Well, yes. Yeah. I'm a really a Matthews. Is this a black woman? No, I think oh that's God. kind of Indian or Hispanic or something. I don't know what she is. Is that the pride of India? <laughs> Are you an Indian? <laughs> Did you have your testicles cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Who, what, what, what oh, stop it. I'm not, going, I'm not going through that. I'm not going through that today. Anyway, she You're saw her that. husband, she says, flirting with other women at this party. So she waited for him to fall asleep, and then she got the scissors out. She was charged with mayhem and assault but was cleared on Friday after a three-day deliberation by a jury. What land of Indians are you from? <laughs> <laughs> they just decided she was not guilty. During right. the trial, she claimed that she had been raped by her husband and had suffered years of abuse. Oh, that's great. And, and is there any proof of that? No, she just said this. The couple were reconciled before the trial and are said to be living together as eunuch and wife. Oh. Eunuch? Well, yes. Oh, my. They couldn't, I mean, they couldn't find them? them? Yeah, they couldn't find them. The testicles? Yeah. I don't know that you can do that. Ah. Yeah, I think you lose a lot of fluid. <laughs> Isn't there a lot of fluid ah. in that? Isn't there, like, well, like yeah, what's I in mean, that whole sack area? I don't know what's in there. <laughs> Quite Let's right. call Larry Amro, see if he knows. <laughs> <laughs> He's measured a few, allegedly. <laughs> What is in there? We're doing what is a testicle there? routine. No, really, what is in there? Is there? Is there? Isn't there? They fill up with fluid. Do anything? Plumbing. With plumbing. <laughs> yeah, just the various plumbing. So she cut them off, and what did she do? Did she throw them out by a seven eleven? I don't know what happened to them after she <laughs> cut them off. No dog found them. <laughs> Earrings. <laughs> they say her acquittal is no surprise in light of the Lorena wow. Bobbitt decision. So uh, women now are allowed to go around and take the law into their own hands. <laughs> And cut off a man's testicles. Well, that's something else. Well, good luck, everybody. Good luck. 
This is yes, not funny. They say here, even in this little article, that it seems that juries are very loath to convict people in these high-profile trials. Because these, these juries are insane. They forget what the rule of thumb is here. Someone committed an illegal act. They injured someone. The you mean if a guy cuts, I guarantee if a guy cuts off a woman's breast, though, he'll go to jail. If he can prove that she abused him. Yeah, maybe sure. He would Good luck. <laughs> Proving that. Well, he was flirting, though. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, he, that's right. Yeah, he, was he was flirting, flirting with some other women. At a party. Well, he now winked at another else. woman, so of course you mutilate him. Yeah. Now nobody else will want him. He has fixed that problem. <laughs> it's perfectly okay. Gilbert's very upset. I'm very upset. You know, he's never gotten I serious like about his story limbo. before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hmm. <laughs> What all of you can... Uh... All right, all right. That's a bad Rush Limbaugh. I know, I'm trying. I'm working yeah, you on better it. work on that a little more. I can't do a Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, well, no one can because he's so nondescript. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the Dallas Cowboys have named a new head coach. They hadn't Larry even Amorose. finished... <laughs> <laughs> they hadn't even finished... We need to measure you, uh, you players... Did you see that new coach? They haven't even finished firing Jimmy Johnson before they had Barry Switzer or whatever his name is. Switzer. Ready. Mr. Switzer. <laughs> Mr. Switzer, we'll need to measure you. <laughs> Mr. Switzer. All ready to go. So here is the new head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. What's his name again? Barry Switzer. I saw him on TV. I couldn't believe it. He was screaming like a mental patient. I wouldn't want his job. He hasn't coached in quite a while. Well, it's a whole weird thing going on. The guy who's the quarterback for Dallas is Troy Aikman. Mm-hmm. Troy Aikman played for this guy in college. Yeah. Aikman left the team because of him. Oof. Supposedly. Yeah, I heard bad things about this guy. All right. Here's his uh, press conference. I'm excited. I'm excited to be a Dallas Cowboy. Who wouldn't want to be a Dallas Cowboy? Gilbert. Yeah. <laughs> and is this, you have the clip where he starts screaming? That's when they were measuring him. Yeah, wait, here's another one. Uh, yeah, let's see what he does here. I will try to be fair with people. I will treat people right along the way. And I just want to ask the same in return. And if it's not given, hey, I know who you are. That's it. And I think that was in response to how he'll be treated by the players. There's this uh, other clip of him somewhere. I don't know. I probably find... have that somewhere. I just have to go looking for because it. Because I want to be a Dallas Cowboy! <laughs> 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 Whoa. It's pretty nutty. <laughs> It's really he's like he's he's just wild. But you know, <laughs> who would want that job? Who well, would who listen would want to it? Jerry Jones. I don't know what's going on. This is the owner, Jerry yeah. Jones. This is the guy that Infinity brought down to their big uh, managers meeting to give the speech on how to run stuff. Was it this guy or Jimmy Johnson? No, Jerry Jones, the owner. Hmm. Jerry Jones, the guy. How to be? How to negotiate? He did a real good job here. <laughs> I think Ed Moyer threw up on him. <laughs> That's Ed's tactic. Good speech. <laughs> <laughs> and Moyer's our sales manager. He like moons, he gets drunk and vomits. Very fun guy. Yeah, fun guy. He actually is. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Mr. Jones. <laughs> All right, here is Jerry Jones. So he came down and gave a speech to like guys like Tom Chiasano. Okay. Because Tom needs to learn. <laughs> Tom, they, they have to fill up Tom's head with information. All right, here's Tom. And, this and, is the guy who spoke, right? The and, robot. And, anyway, and Ed, in defend Ed, Ed has never vomited. Oh, really? He refused really? to let go of any alcohol never, that he might ever, have bobbed. Ever, ever. Really? He's never vomited? Not that I'm aware of. Oh, I, mean, well, I stand corrected. Long time. Okay. Oh. All right. And his character. Thank you, Tom. Hey, Tom, so this guy Jimmy Jones, I mean Jerry Jones, Jerry what did he tell you at the manager's meeting? We just spoke about how he built the Cowboys and, uh, you know, about his management philosophy and trying to build them. Why in the world would he fire? Jimmy Johnson. Well, Jimmy Johnson. Why can't he get along with him? You know what it is, man? Seriously, I, this is my beat on this guy Jerry Jones. He's got such a big ego. You know, it's like it's like guys get into this. I was saying this on the air yesterday. Guys get into this. It's an ego thing for them. You don't see women in business doing it, but guys, you know how they're always trying to like you know be full of bluster and they won't back down and stuff. It's one of those things where this guy, this coach he has, is so perfect. Whatever it is, the team is on fire. They're making millions and millions of dollars because this team is number one, and he can't find a way to get along with them. Well, but I, he's I mean, the owner. Back off. 
I mean, I, I think, I mean, he was the owner. And, and he not. wants way too much credit for the team, this guy Jimmy Jones. He's a lot more than the owner. Jerry Jones. I mean, he did, he's an owner who did every, who did all the job of a general manager does. He was involved in... That's what he told players. you guys. No, 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 he didn't tell us that. This is just from reading about it for the past five years. And I think that um, maybe he did want more of the credit than the other guy was... Yeah, but I mean, why that. would you mess up a good team? And why two would you... Ego, two egos who apparently couldn't get along. You know, who had gone as far as they couldn't, they just couldn't get along anymore. Uh, that's a guy thing. It's, they pro it's a shoving match. Well, listen to oh, it. Oh, ego shoving, sure. Yeah, listen to it. And did you hear him the other day? He sounds like a robot. No. Did he talk like a robot to you guys? Oh, no, he was a very good speaker. Was he? He was like... He, he was more animated than Tom, which doesn't that, mean right. very much. That is correct. Right. Tom talks like a robot. <laughs> you this are is the, Yeah, I mean... You are right, Robin. <laughs> All right, here you go. Here's a speech. Well, I think that uh, uh, the changes that we've uh, made and what we've incurred have created a challenge and created a uh, more of a challenge. <laughs> Imagine listening to that guy drone on it. Yeah, this, this was the commanding speaker. What we have created is a... I don't know that act that hillbilly accent. I don't know, man. When I hear it, he's it's hard Arkansas. to take. He's it's hard Arkansas. to take. He's what? He's from Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. When I hear that, yeah. oh, what is that? What's oh, Arkansas? That's, what that's hillbilly. From Arkansas. Uh, that's not hillbilly. Well, I think that you all ought to talk to your talent some and explain the way of the world to them. Why don't you just get Granny? Yeah. <laughs> Jethro. To give hey, you a speech. Hey, hey, uh, let me tell you about your gazintas. <laughs> when you're negotiating with these guys, a two gazinta, two twice, and once, and whatever it is, you know what I'm saying. You got, I mean, Jerry Jones is the guy who made a fortune as a wildcat uh, oil guy. Yeah. What does so, he know about management? Well, he doesn't know anything about football. No. Nothing. And he's, he's going around talking about football. Yeah, well, all he's done. But that guy, the way he speaks, like, I wanna, mm, mm, mm. let him go on because he gets into right. it. No okay. wonder you guys drink your brains out at that <laughs> thing. Seriously. Me, I'm not a drinker. Gilbert, you attracted to Tom's new hairdo? Yes, very <laughs> much. Very much so? Yeah, yeah. I like nice. The, I like the clean look, too, Gilbert. Yeah, really. He wants to measure it's Kind of like a butcher's hat trick. Did you mean like that? Hat trick. Last week. Oh, wait, Who's the next no, one? Okay. No, Eddie? Eddie? <laughs> what? All right, here we go. I do resent the fact that because I am here every day, because I have made the commitment I've made, because I wanted to be with the Cowboys in the NFL as much as I did, that that is called meddling. I will tell you right now, if you have worked as hard as I have to get where I've got, and somebody says you're meddling in what you've done, that will make you a little defensive and turn you into something you don't like yourself. Now, hold that mule still. <laughs> I got plowing to do. <laughs> did that guy actually, how long did he speak for when he, when he talked to you, his motivational speech? I've had 45 minutes an hour. Oh. Was he yelling like that? No, he was real good. Hey, you boys better learn something. Just because you live up north don't mean you know jack squat. <laughs> God, that, that clip was how long, Ron? About 30 seconds? Yeah. That seemed like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> he was droning. I hey. will tell you. See, Tom re respects anyone with money. Yeah. So he's like, hey, that... He was an oil driller. No, this guy started, I mean, wild he was a he wildcat. Was a wildcat. He was hey, y'all, you got to be like wildcats. <laughs> <laughs> now, you hear, anyone who makes money right away becomes an expert and no, telling no, no. people how to work. Yeah. you got to have a serious spinal cord to do what he did. What did he do? I mean, to be a wildcatter. Yeah. I mean, yeah, what's a those? big roll of the dice. Oh, you got to be real stupid and just lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, I happen to have been very stupid. <laughs> and to have you people up here talking to me, because like, what he knows about running a radio station yeah. or motivating radio guys is beyond me. <laughs> it's like wildcatting. Radio, you see, is like wildcatting, boys. And here's how it goes. When you're out in the oil fields, you have to drill a hole. And when you're in radio, and boys, i got to stand corrected. There is absolutely no analogy here to be drawn. i got to be honest with you. Not only did I not take the SATs, I can't spell SAT. Now, good night and God bless you. What kind of, what kind of, what kind of thing is that? I never heard of a speech like that. Well, anyway, Tom, I hope you learned something while you were out there. All right, very good. And, Thank you, Tom. And, and it's a good haircut. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a good shape. Yes, that's her. You look great, Tom. You're handsome. Yeah. I bid you welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Listen and, uh, to them, the children of the night. <laughs> what music they made. Bella Lugosi, the world's worst actor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> people, people praising him. The world's worst movies and actor.
And they buried him in that costume. Oh, yes. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> he became he, Dracula. Yeah, well, he went into the old age home, and like Tarzan, he, Tarzan became Tarzan. They had to send him every day. <laughs> Tarzan used to run around the old age home in a loincloth. Yeah. It was the saddest thing. That's true. That's why. Because <laughs> it might follow them right into old age. And hey, God bless Herman Munster. He didn't even want to wear those boots once he got out of them. <laughs> the children of the night. night. Hot music they make. <laughs> <laughs> a spider spinning his web for an unwary fay. The blood is the life, Mr. Rainfield. <laughs> Could we go on to Troy To die. A little more Bella oh. To be really dead must be glorious. <laughs> there are far worse things awaiting man than death. <laughs> We're gonna do the whole movie. Yeah, come on, let him. <laughs> Keep going. You're a very wise man, Van Helsing, for one who has not lived even a single lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's amazing about Gilbert Ryan? Yeah. How can a man be so talented and not get laid? <laughs> How is that possible? How does that happen? It's a terrible rip-off. Yeah, put them in Ripley's, believe it or not. <laughs> They'd have a pencil drawing of me. Look, there were people running around calling Henry Kissinger sexy. Yeah, I know. And Gilbert can't get that. <laughs> the children of the night. <laughs> You've got that one down. I could listen to that all night. I love old Dracula movies. <laughs> Well, I suggest you rent them and play Troy Aikman. Oh, please. <laughs> and now a quote from Troy Aikman. Listen. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Not. You know who's a vampire? Who? Tom, our general manager. Because <laughs> he sucks the creative life out of me. <laughs> I see him and I, I immediately feel non-creative. <laughs> I want a meeting. I want a meeting. <laughs> Then will we have a meeting <laughs> so we can discuss the show. <laughs> and what you will be doing on it. Let's discuss the radio show. <laughs> we will make improvements that will help. <laughs> you will not say penis. <laughs> you will not say bottom. <laughs> All right, let's let's listen to Troy Aikman. Troy Aikman. Let's listen to Troy Aikman. <laughs> Troy Aikman. <laughs> let's listen to Claude Aikman. Have you ever watched a football game? <laughs> oh yes. Are you like football? Yes, I love the American football. <laughs> There is going to be a period of transition here. I think there is going to be uh, uh, a little bit of uncertainty. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> compared to where it would have been had Jimmy have stayed. Um, but all things considered, and considering the fact that Jimmy is no longer here, I, I think that uh, the hiring of Barry Switzer uh, makes things is, is, makes the transition as smoothly as, as could possibly be expected. Hello? <laughs> With, uh... What is the law? Not to spill blood. That is the law. I'm going to put uh, Gilbert in a vampire movie. Yeah, what yes. in the world is he talking about now? <laughs> I don't even the know The House that. of Pain. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the House of Pain. Yes. Not men, not beasts. Things. <laughs> <laughs> Those are great movies. Not man, not Do bees. Do you know what this Things. is all about? This visa lottery that's going on? Visa, visa lottery. lottery. I can't figure out what Gilbert's doing. I am. <laughs> the visa lottery. They will be taking applications from June 1st to June 30th. To In the house of pain, no I met deal. Larry Amro. Oh, yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> But he measured my testicles. <laughs> All right, it was you. painful. All right, now wait a second, Robin. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. All right, go on. Come on, Gilbert. Now it's okay. time to move along. The State Department is running a visa lottery where people can go and apply, and a certain number of people will be picked and automatically get green cards. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let me tell you something. You know, years ago, we used to get immigrants that were so... They used to contribute. You got some great immigrants. We are now packed this country, 
Pale and we get Rosie. yeah. Now we get immigrants from God knows where, <laughs> and now they're all going to have a big lottery. And you know the nudniks who are non-productive will have time to enter their names in the lottery. Sure, but there's only one entry per person. They won't cheat. No, they'll, they won't find a way around that. <laughs> I've already voted nine times in the prodigy poll. <laughs> me running for governor. By the way, in the prodigy poll, uh -huh. an update. Yes. New York State voters only. 51% of the vote goes to me know, for governor. I know, I know. Oh, you knew that? They also say that you're getting a great vote total in Washington, D.C. That's right. And those people are allowed to vote in the New York State uh, primary. No, no, they're not. No, they're not. I just wanted you to know that people who take politics seriously... Hmm. I'm sure you've heard this already, voting. but in Oyster Bay, where I live, I, I didn't see this myself, but people are telling me... People in storefronts are putting up big signs in the store windows, Howard Stern for governor. Absolutely. Do you know about that? People are excited about it. Oyster Bay! Yay! Yay! I'm absolutely serious. All right, take it easy. All right, go ahead, Brian. 55,000 of these visas will be given away. 55. 55. The selections will be made I, randomly by computer. <laughs> and these people will be awarded permanent resident visas. Dracula. Beginning in October. <laughs> yes. What do you think of what Robin is saying? Well, it reminds me of my broken down battlement in the Carfax Abbey. <laughs> you never knew a fellow like Ghost he was saying. <laughs> so, Robin, when does this lottery begin? When are we going to get these new citizens? Uh, in I June. pick three, five, six. <laughs> what is wrong with us saying? What is wrong with us saying? Let's pick the best. Well, they do have some requirements. You what are they? You have to have a high school education or its equivalent. You have to have worked for two of the last five years in a job that requires two years of training or experience. Hmm. And you have to have measured men's buttocks is on the Arsenio Hall. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to call a number. Oh, well, good. That'll weed some people out. <laughs> it reminds me of a buttocks I saw on the Arsenio Show. <laughs> <laughs> it was not flat enough. <laughs> what else is in the news, Robin? <laughs> well, Dracula. of course, they have made some arrests out in Los Angeles. Two gang members. Good. They Good. have been uh, arrested and charged with robbery and murder in connection with the killing over the weekend of those two Japanese students <laughs> who were here. <laughs> oh, Jackie. Oh, come on. <laughs> that is ridiculous. What are you laughing about? That was a sad story. So here is police officer or police commissioner, Los Angeles Police Commissioner Willie Williams. Wait a second, Robin. Look who just walked in the room. Frankenstein. Uh, <laughs> and Dracula. <laughs> oh, back, back. Negroes are more frightening than werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> These were Hispanic gang members. Thank you for the stereotype. Go on and play. The L.A. Police Commissioner will. All right. Yeah. Believe it or not. <laughs> People were killed, and it was not Negroes responsible. <laughs> oh, you. Yeah. All right, all right, Dracula. <laughs> I didn't know Dracula was a member of the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> all right, here we go. Willie Williams. Uh, mm -hmm. Willie Williams. Willie <laughs> Luda. As of right now, it was a robbery. The young men were not targeted because of their ethnicity, the fact that they sure. were students, or the fact that they were visitors. Right. It was an unfortunate tragedy that happened in the city of Los Angeles, and we are pleased to announce that five days later, we have made an arrest. Is there a death penalty in uh, California? Yes. Well, boy, oh, boy. We were pleased to announce they were not Negroes. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were surprised as anyone. But a crime was committed, and a Negro is not responsible. Let him go on. We'll be checking into this. They really <laughs> should say that, because everyone right away assumes it's a black guy who might have committed only, the crime. Only certain people. Well, <laughs> certain people like Gilbert. They should make an announcement. First of all, we want to say at the press conference... Uh, they were not black. Black people were not involved. If Gilbert's listening, black people are not involved. Yeah, right. uh, we'd like to make the announcement now. <laughs> There were no, there was no black involvement. Now pinch me, I'm dreaming. <laughs> All right, no, now where no, were we? I'm being Willie serious. Williams. Is something Willie Williams. Say. All right, here we go. Willie Williams. Here's a message for Gilbert. <laughs> I have a message for his mother. What, what was on your mind when you named him Willie Williams? <laughs> William William. The city of Los Angeles is still a great city. Oh. It's a wonderful place to live. Yeah. Between it's the riots. Place to work. The earthquakes. It is not the most violent city in America. It is not the most violent city in the world. That would be New York. Time, <laughs> like other major cities. But we welcome our visitors. The LAPD is dedicated to protecting all of its citizens. 
mm. and all of his visitors. Come to L.A. and you'll be killed by people other than Negroes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a variety of people who will kill you. Yes, sir. We have people of all... It's a melting it's a, it's a melting... It's a rainbow coalition yeah. of people who will kill you. Indians will kill you, too. <laughs> yeah. Just come to L.A. Well, let me tell you something. I feel bad for the families of the Japanese people. Yes. Uh, well, it's a sad fact in America today that uh, it is open can't warfare. Do can't do anything. We have uh, a generation on our hands that were raised by no one. They were raised like packs of wolves, and they are out there hunting and feeding. praying. Feeding. They are feeding on us. It's like Dracula is back. <laughs> The children Listen of the night. The children of the night. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. That's truer than you know, Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> Not far from the you children heard. of the night. They're oh. out there. And they are children. <laughs> they have the minds of three years old. And I'll tell you something. What? Pearl Harbor or not, that's a terrible story. When a Japanese <laughs> student comes over here, I can't even... Hey, I mean it. I'm a little Pearl Harbor notwithstanding. Pearl Harbor notwithstanding. The fact that a lot of our good men <laughs> and women, Robin. The Japs killed them. The Japs killed everyone. It's still a terrible story. Oh, you're right. Because, let me tell you something. Forget about those days. We're all friends now. It's the worst thing since Godzilla. Right. It really is terrible. No one can walk around anymore. Right, Dracula? Oh, no one can walk around anymore. Stay in your room and keep the door locked. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's a public service announcement from Dracula. Dracula. Oh, Chuck and Wilbur. We gotta find McDougal's house of horrors. <laughs> That's when Dracula got bad. Yes. After Costello started meeting him. I thought he had slipped into that. He wasn't quite so serious. I'm telling you, the candle moved. <laughs> <laughs> it was... What do you mean? You're trying to tell me the candle moved? <laughs> yeah, it was so for that, and it moved. <laughs> In California, they have gone to a system. They have finally announced and decided that they will go to a system of fingerprinting mm -hmm. welfare recipients. So they'll finger them? No. <laughs> fingerprint. Now, finger we'll print? get on the Arsenio show after you finger me, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> Here is Jennifer Nelson. Who's she, Robin? She's an official for the government of California. What's she wearing? <laughs> What are you wearing, Jennifer Nelson? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wearing the dress. <laughs> it's a simple, fast way to make sure that people aren't getting duplicate aid payments, which, um, at a, especially at a time when we've got limited resources, protects the taxpayers' dollars for those who, who truly are in need of aid. Yes, because you know they are having great troubles out in California making uh, budgets. Because of all of the uh, all immigration the and so forth. The Mexicans. So they have gone to some, take some measures to try to prevent welfare fraud. And some people are saying, well, there's, you know, not that much welfare fraud. How come you're fingerprinting us? Well, this is what Jennifer has yeah. to say to that. Yeah, they, they don't want to be fingerprinted now. If you look at even a 4% welfare fraud rate in our, in our AFTC it's program, too high. that would total <laughs> as high as three quarters of a billion dollars. So even if even if it's a small, you know, a four percent problem, which some would call small, when you're talking nearly a billion dollars of state taxpayer of dollars, it's something that's worth that's worth pursuing. This country has become so politically correct. Everyone's afraid to say what's going on. Mexicans are coming into the California area. By the we have now have are, Mexico. Are you coming into the California area? See. See. All right. <laughs> With your sister. See. What is her name? <laughs> All right. Good. You got out of your system. Yes. Go back to Dracula. That was funny. All, right. All right. Listen to me. They, we've got all the Mexicans coming into California, and no politician is willing to say we have to build a wall around California. They're all <laughs> afraid to say it. we got to fingerprint it. It would cost us a, a, a half a billion dollars to put the wall up and would save us billions of dollars a year. This is a goof. And now the Mexicans, I don't want to be fingerprinted. You don't want to be fingerprinted. Go back to Mexico. You won't be fingerprinted at all. Get a job. You won't be fingerprinted. I mean, and, and who can, never mind the welfare. We've got to put these kids through school. We've got to educate them, teach them English. They don't want to learn English. They want, uh, want multi-language uh, uh, classroom. It's called bilingual. Whatever. You speak English? <laughs> what? You speak English? <laughs> <laughs> Does your sister speak English? Si. What's her name? Sue. Oh. All right, please, get off it. Let's go on. Bert, uh, what's his name? Reynolds. Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that problem. toupee frightens me. <laughs> get it away from me. Dracula's afraid of Burt Reynolds. Dracula, <laughs> that's my new movie. That stops Dracula. I got it. Dracula versus Burt Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a cross, an you animal get is Burt eating Reynolds your head. Today. What a great sketch. Now, this one I ought to write for Saturday Night Live because they're in desperate need of material. <laughs> Dracula versus Burt Reynolds. 
Well, Burt Reynolds, I don't know will, if he'll be able to do it because he's having a, some kind of breakdown. Yesterday, he was complaining of chest pains on the set of Evening Shade, his Give show. Me what? So, they rushed him to the hospital. Here is his <laughs> spokesperson, Scott Jackson. And what's his problem, Burt Reynolds? <laughs> he finally got rid of that Lonnie Anderson. You'd think he'd be happy. He Not w- a good time. couldn't stand there, and then he gets rid of her. Now he's now he's, and then he, they say he's upset about the death of Dinah Shore. <laughs> <laughs> Who died? Is very familiar with the uh, incidents in his life that have upset him, and they create stress. And stress is a killer. Uh, it's a, uh, I think you it accumulates, and this these, this uncomfortableness may be a result of that accumulation. Dracula, let me ask you a question. <laughs> If Burt Reynolds is upset about the death of Dinah Shore, but is death a terrible thing? To die, to be really dead, must be glorious. There are far worse things awaiting man than death. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are uh, the stresses that they. I'm telling to... you, she ain't dead. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. Are you saying that Dinah Shore is still walking around? I saw her come out of her coffin. <laughs> now, look, we got to return her body to Mr. McDougal. All right, well, let Robin say something. They say the stresses are the death of Dinah Shore, the ending of his marriage to Lonnie, the breakup oh. with his new girl. He was with Cam, Natalie Wood. And he was just mugged. You know, they these guys <laughs> mug him a week or two ago. Yeah, they try to steal his hair. Yeah. <laughs> Dracula, I hear your movies are more real than his hair. <laughs> what hey, is it? Give us over that wig. <laughs> You know, we're always like interested in Gilbert's like uh, sex oh, life. Oh, no. well, this is a girl who uh, who faxed us in this letter about how cute she thinks he is and how much she likes him. Oh, really? And uh, I got her on the phone, and she's you know she's pretty into Gilbert. Oh, oh forget it. I'm okay. doing the. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you got a girl for me, and you want to take the call? You want? Okay, I'll do you a favor. You want? You want Gilbert? <laughs> sure. And what do you look like? Um, red hair, awesome. green eyes, freckles. About five seven. How much you weigh? Um, I don't know. I haven't weighed myself lately. Look, do you look like Shoshana Lonstein? <laughs> That's what he wants. That's what he wants. Do you have a big uh, rack? Do I have what? A big chest. Oh, I, I knew this would come up, and I knew I'd have to disappoint you there. Uh, I had a breast reduction. Oh, so what is your cup size? Now? Yeah. Um, about a C. Oh, sure. That's fine. <laughs> you wear Daisy Dukes? Can you wear, do you have a really good body? Um, I like it. It's really strong. Do guys hit on you a lot? Mm, yeah. Uh-oh. Hey, Dracula just sat up. <laughs> All right, listen, what do you want me to do with this, Gilbert? You're not going to sleep with her, right? You, you, would you sleep with Gilbert? Um, no. Or did, oh, you won't. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> so, in other words, Gilbert has no rap. I mean, he doesn't really want to talk to you. He wants to just go to bed with you. Oh, well, if you're willing to do that, he'll be with you. Yeah, he sorry to disappoint him. Go slide down and throw your legs behind your head. <laughs> no. And he wants to have down. sex. Heck. He wants to have sex while he's dressed up as Dracula. Yes. <laughs> All right, in other words, you're not interested in this, are you? Gilbert? Start howling to the moon. Oh, thank I you. No, that, you're not for him. He, he, he really likes a girl who just has sex. Uh, I know that about you. Am yes, I right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Go on, Robin, please. Let's move on to where was I? In you were just after the story about uh, uh, was Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds. Yes, okay. So let's move on to Senator Bob Packwood. He was on the Larry King show last night. And <laughs> got to question him about uh, all those allegations of sexual harassment. He's still trying to hold on to that job, that senator? Oh, yes, he's not giving up. Whatever it was I did, even if I couldn't remember it, I apologize for it, and I apologize for it again tonight. If, if I did things I can't remember, didn't know, or to people I didn't know, I'm, I'm embarrassed, and I apologize. Do you remember the votes you took in the Senate? Yeah, no, nope. and, and people don't want me as their governor because I might be goofy. Oh. So he also says he can't even remember, you know, there's like 22 to 28 women accusing him of things. Yeah. Listen to this. <laughs> doesn't even know how many women are accusing him. There's these 22 charges against me. In the ethics committee, Four, 14 of the women I simply cannot recall. So I've got to take a little bit of their word for what they say happened. Sounds like Jackie being a senator. <laughs> you know, so many things happen you don't even remember. You know, one of those nights. Oh, I mean, I don't doubt it happened. But... 
I'm afraid it didn't. Well, what do you look like? Could happen. What do you look like? Uh, I knew uh, you. It's possible. You get blonde hair? <laughs> I don't know. Can we fingerprint you? Are you sure? Uh, all right. Dracula, I'm sure you've been with a lot of women. You've I have been with many women over an eternity <laughs> on earth. <laughs> but never the right one. Never. I am still looking. <laughs> Throw your legs and spread them as far apart as you can. <laughs> Robin, what else is in the news? I have this thing written. Oh, oh you know that's what? good. Oh, yes. Yes. Freddie Webb? Why do I have that written down? Who is he? He, 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 a spider spreading Freddy. his web. Fred, from the show. No, 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 no. Fred, what's your last name? Webb. That's what I thought. It says here he's dead. i got to find out who he is. Freddy's dead? That's what I said. <laughs> now, who is now are Webb? you alive or are you... I have to figure that out now. I read it. Re read it. I wrote it. Now. I read it. Robin. I'm telling you, Howie, I read it. If you wrote it down, it must be important. Be Miffa right. Howie, I read it this morning. <laughs> i got to figure out who he is. Well, oh, Gilbert will be level. at Caroline's on April 6th. Uh, Maybe he <laughs> runs Caroline's. <laughs> Must be someone important. April 4th will be on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Have you been hearing the stories about that young girl who uh, was engaged and she disappeared from the Roosevelt Field shopping center? Yeah, did they find her? Yeah. Is she alive? And they kept saying, she's so predictable, please return her. We know that she didn't run off. She ran off. She was uh, hiding out in Canada. Yeah. Why? Oh, yeah! That was the one who was getting married? Was she getting married? Yeah, she had this fiancé. Was it Larry Amaros? <laughs> <laughs> They have uh, information that she is okay and that her actions were voluntary, according to the Nassau police now. We're they, definitely not leaning toward abduction. They should put her up on charges. Why? Because, first of all, we're all searching for her. We know we're looking for she her. She didn't ask for this. She didn't? But no. you got to tell someone when you're leaving, for God's sakes. Why did she leave? I don't know that. Maybe she wasn't in love anymore. She didn't have to tell the boyfriend no. That's often why it is. That she's being pressured into doing something she doesn't want to do. Gilbert once had a girlfriend. Uh, she left the country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They didn't no one have, ever found her. They didn't have communities on Mars yet. Yeah. Well, that's unbelievable. I bet you a lot of people already bought the stupid gifts. You know what was funny? Her boyfriend, when they called him to tell, tell her that she was all right. What did he say? He said, wait a minute, let me get this crazy psychic off the other line. Let me what? Let me what? Let me get this crazy psychic off the other line. He He's already the calling the psychic? the psychic. Let me get Dion Warwick off the line here. You have to help me. Oh. You called our psychic friends hotline network. I'm Dion Warwick's personal psychic. Well, uh, I have to know that you're for real. Are you really a psychic? In addition to Dion Warwick, I have helped other friends like... um. Um, Gladys Knight. <laughs> All right, okay, listen, my wife has been, my fiancé has been missing for two days, and I want to know, where can I find her? Well, first you'll need to buy uh, every product we have. <laughs> the Psychic Friends book, Psychic Friends uh, Astrology Globe. The Ouija board. Psychic yeah. Friends Ouija board. All right, I'll buy all that. Did you buy the Psychic Friends CD-ROM? <laughs> yes, I bought all that. Now tell me where my wife is. I'll need a, an article of her clothing. Why is that? So you can zone in on the special wavelength? <laughs> no, no, no. We have a dog here. Sniff the uh, and find finds your girlfriend. Um, all right. Listen, I'll do anything. I'm desperate. Please, use your psychic powers to find my girlfriend. Please, I beg of you. All right. I'm using my psychic powers now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you said your girlfriend's hair color was blonde? Uh, no, brunette. That's right. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm getting. That's what I'm getting, brunette. <laughs> and uh, you said the first uh, letter in her name is an uh, um. No, not an R, B. R, B? <laughs> a B. I'm getting a B. A B with uh, brunette hair. Okay, I know where she is. I'm getting a. Mm -hmm. Am I paying by the minute for this call? <laughs> yes. But don't you want to find your girlfriend? Okay, here we go. Okay, I have a clear thought now. You've talked for 15 minutes with me. You've spent $3,000. I'm going to tell you where your girlfriend is. Now, she was last seen in Roosevelt Field Mall? That is correct. Okay, here, here's what I'm getting. 
I'm seeing a huge black space. Oh, my God. Diane's nostrils are huge. <laughs> Her name is Dion. <laughs> Dion's nostrils are huge. Your girlfriend is in Dion's nostrils. Oh, I don't think this is very real. Uh... Hold on, my other phone is ringing. It's the cops. They tell me they found her. That's right. I told you they'd find her. And I know exactly where they found her. Anyway, I, I'm not going to continue that. <laughs> I you think it was Gilbert's kind of funny though that he was on the phone with a psychic. <laughs> you think Gilbert's C and Sue routine is annoying? If I can't. <laughs> yeah, really. Was that annoying? <laughs> was that annoying? C. <laughs> well, maybe you should get a lawyer and Sue. <laughs> C. <laughs> what else? Anything, Robin? This is interesting. In Detroit, they had a different kind of a joyride. A man took off with an EMS truck. No, While please. the patient and the technicians were still in hey, the Hey, I plasma in it. A high-speed chase ensued, of course, with the EMS truck hitting three or four trucks before crashing into a van. The crew member jumped out when the truck stopped for a red light, but the patient was still inside, so they abandoned the patient and let this maniac run around with him. Five people were injured, including the hijacker. Detroit, huh? Yeah. What ethnic group do you think was involved? <laughs> Ask Gilbert. He Gilbert? Ask. Well, uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to implicate this dissection by being uh, the most uh, fertile of the r ramifications. I'll oh, be quiet. You're no, not funny sorry. anymore. <laughs> Florida Senate approved <laughs> legislation intended to crack down on repeat rapists. The legislation would allow judges to order chemical crash uh, castration. A chemical castration. Crash <laughs> of repeat rapists by having them take synthetic female hormones. Oh, really? Yeah. Gilbert, you've taken those. Oh, the third violent sexual assault would receive the death penalty. Well, it's about time. You know, Detroit's completely out of control. Why do you say that? Well, I lived there. It was, it was a nightmare. You live in the suburbs, but the actual Detroit is all burnt out. You've never seen anything like it. And anyone who lives in the town has, like, big metal... Bars on their apartment yeah. windows, and I mean, worse than New York. It's a city that the people are imprisoned in. It really looks like you know when they do those futuristic movies, like Mel Gibson is running around, and it's you know there's been nuclear war. Yeah. And there's only a few people left, and it's Road Warrior, and there. And you get your little bands, and you run around. Yeah, right. And you have your own gang. That's what, that's what Detroit is. Looking for gas. What, what's the color of the people in the gangs? I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I don't look at color. I just look at people. <laughs> I'm they're, running for they're, governor. There's good and bad and old people. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> they say here in this little article from the Daily News that until the day Jesus Hernandez confessed to sodomizing... <laughs> I, 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 did you sodomize someone? Oh, jeez. Sodomizing <laughs> his stepmother and slitting her throat, he had always been the good twin. Yeah. I've so done that. it was his identical brother, Eddie, who was arrested when the mother... The stepmother couldn't tell them apart. You know, she couldn't say exactly which one of them had right. a character. Right. But meanwhile, the but good they one did. They arrested Eddie, the bad twin, oh, who I've turned twin? out to be <laughs> Jesus, right. the good twin. But you know, there's a lot of stories. Uh, I heard Hes she couldn't. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right. That's it. I'm throwing you out of here, Gilbert. If you do that again, I'm throwing you out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, goodness. But, you know, it's, just, it's interesting to me that so many Hispanic people name their children Jesus. Yeah, it's a Jesus. Isn't that an insult? And then Jesus <laughs> sodomizes his stepmother. Do you think if Jesus was alive today, he'd like it that all the Spanish people are naming their, their kids Jesus? He'd be like, how come the white people don't name me Jesus? <laughs> Jesus. And it's really weird when you hear, you know, you see it in the paper, it reads Jesus. So Jesus sodomized his yes. stepmother yes. and slit her throat. A lot of trouble for the Jackson clan. It's now claimed that they are not paying off the people who helped them run that Jackson family honors tribute to Elizabeth Taylor and Barry Gordy. What, do you really think they were going to pay? They have only uh, so far uh, uh, contributed $100,000 to charity, and they seem to have a lot of outstanding debt. They haven't even paid the producer what they owe him, so he can't pay the technicians he paid to work on the thing. Not only did the show suck, but nobody got paid. Yeah. They say part of the problem was that Jackson was under the cloud of child molestation charges, 
So they had to start reducing ticket prices. Uh, whoever handled the sale of tickets is also in trouble because people who did shell out $350 for a ticket wound up sitting next to people who paid $50 for the same ticket when they had to slash prices. So those people are asking for their money back. Hmm. They wound up giving away 3,000 tickets once Michael Jackson said that he wouldn't show up if there wasn't a full house. I'm innocent. I'm really innocent, and he has 15 million. Hey, what, what did the lady say to Michael Jackson on the beach? What? Get out of my son. Oh. <laughs> Sick. Sick. It was silly. Ah, they, they measured my penis and buttocks for the... In my private area. For the Arsenio show. <laughs> that was the most humiliating thing that's ever happened to me. It was degrading. It was so degrading. <laughs> they but said if they touch my testicles, they'd get a movie. <laughs> Madonna is going to be on Letterman tonight. That seems to be a big deal, getting a lot of press. Is that right? Yeah. Big deal. Gilbert's going to be on the Tonight Show on the 4th. <laughs> Nobody writes about that. No. Yeah, now she likes Letterman. I guess because she needs some publicity. Steven Spielberg is making, uh, or producing at least, the new movie version of The Little Rascals. Oh, yeah? Already signed up for cameos are Daryl Hannah. She's going to be Mrs. Crabtree, the teacher. And Magic Johnson is going to be Buckwheat's father. <laughs> Probably be a college professor. You can't, Buckwheat, yeah. 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 Buckwheat will be a bright guy. He'll he'll speak perfect English. Yeah, it won't be funny. Yeah. It'll be politically correct. I don't know how you could do the little rascals today. Well, I hello, I'm Buckwheat. <laughs> I, do not, I do not prefer watermelon. <laughs> I have to study for my college equivalency. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and does Buckwheat's father have AIDS in this? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> HIV wheat. <laughs> HIV, HIV wheat? <laughs> but wheat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert's going to cough up a little... Uh, well, why not? We're having fun. <laughs> oh, loudy! <laughs> hey, come here, buttweed. Oh, loudy! Do that hood. <laughs> he didn't get it that way. No, he didn't. He got it from girls. <laughs> Do you see how well Yanni's album is doing? Yeah. He's cute. Yanni, Yanni, Yanni! Whoa! That's the guy who plays the new age music? Yeah. And he's got that uh, Linda Evans Linda is his girlfriend? Linda Evans is his girlfriend, the Greek guy. Johnny wish he uh, got Linda Evans about 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> he's in the top ten. Come yeah. to me, guy. Linda. Yay, Yanni, Yanni. <laughs> that guy really makes me sick, Yanni. Uh, yeah. Give me your money from the Big Valley. <laughs> oh. Also, Albert Goldman, the man who wrote the Elvis biography that we love so much. Yeah. He's dead. Ah. You're kidding. What did he die of? He was uh, on a trip from Miami to London and died of a heart attack. We had to write a book about him. <laughs> Smear him. He was working on a biography of Jim Morrison, so we guess... Well, now he'll get a good interview. That. I heard it was bad Chinese food that killed him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we interviewed good. Albert Goldman. Yeah. He also wrote... Uh, a John Lennon book. Yeah. That was really controversial because he... He really bad mouthed John Lennon, but I thought it was a cool book. I enjoyed it. All that weird stuff about Yoko and... Yeah, and the cat drippings and all that stuff. Yeah, it was cool. It's a good book. He always finds interesting stuff. Yeah, and if he doesn't find it, he makes it up. <laughs> he'd, he'd have to make it up with me. They need, like, a sex portion of the book. I don't <laughs> think, I don't think there'd be anything boring about a book about you. Yeah. <laughs> mother, 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 please. Gilbert's got some kind of weird relationship with his mother. Really? I don't know. He hardly ever talks about her. And There's blood all over the shower. And he pretends like she doesn't even exist. I met his mother. Did you? Oh, you met his mother. Yeah, when he was in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> that was some family scene. Huh? <laughs> all I know is Gilbert wouldn't ask his mother to do anything for him. He kept asking me to do yeah, stuff. Yeah, I don't know why that was. She knew better. Yeah. <laughs> that was the day the laughter died when Gilbert was in the hospital. <laughs> Nothing funny going on in that room. Mother, mother, I never told you I loved you. <laughs> mother, mother, why, that girl. Oh. 
<laughs> Anything else, Robin? I'll tell you one thing. Uh, Billy West did all his voices for Gilbert that day. I'm sure. <laughs> Billy West wanted to do voices for my kids yesterday, but he'd do it for Gilbert. He couldn't think of anything else to do. He kept doing those voices. Yeah, good. He thought I was going to die. He might as well get him out of the way. You know, Billy idolizes Gilbert or something. <laughs> Some kind of sick thing going on there. And uh, Miramax is He's my Renfield. <laughs> not to distribute the Martin Lawrence movie, You're So Crazy. They couldn't deal with that NC-17 rating, and the people who made the film were not interested in editing it to get a better rating. So it's going to be distributed by the Samuel Goldwyn Company now. Oh, be coming out win. unrated <laughs> at all. Well, I'll tell you something. That's unfortunate. That NC-17 for language. They give, you should see what they give an R rating to. I know. And Because the guy uses what? The F word? They're going to give him an NC-17? They have, they have movies where like people are blowing each other up. Having sex yeah, in the body shower. Body parts all over the place. Naked. People bending over on yeah. the setting of a show. Everything. Everything. And that gets an R rating. Guy uses uh, strong language. We see that on HBO all the time. Yeah. Ah, who cares? Believe me. Who cares about Martin Lawrence anyway? Well, I just thought you'd, in terms of the censorship issue, you'd be interested in what's going on. Yeah, it is. It's terrible. It's terrible when it happens to me, not when Martin Lawrence gets it. <laughs> all right. Only care about stuff. Okay. All right. We know that. <laughs> anything else? That's uh, it for me. Let me check the talk show today, see if there's anything interesting. Give me the plugs, Jackie. Yes, folks. Oh, here's one. An 11-year-old preacher on the Vicky show. Oh, shit. <laughs> what is it? I gotta go. Who's on the phone? Oh, keep barking. Okay. Yes. Oh, keep barking. There's a guy on the phone who says he, um, he flies Continental a lot, and I guess Gilbert flies Continental a lot, too. And he said that Gilbert was in, uh, like, the President's Club, uh, bad-mouthing you a couple weeks ago. Really? I was bad-mouthing? No. When? All right, that's I have time for Oh, okay. uh, what do you mean he was bad mouthed the man? Howard? Yeah. Hi, this is Tom. Yeah, I fly Continental Airlines out of Newark a lot, and I go to the Presence Club, and on more than one occasion, I've seen, uh, seen Gilbert hanging out by the front desk there, and when the girls ask him what you really like, he said you're, you're really a jerk. You know, deep down you're a jerk. Oh, and that yeah. you're uh, you're rude and you're crass and uh, oh you know, yeah, you're... rude and crass. That's yes. right. He yeah. didn't use the word crass, but he says that he's really a jerk. Howard's really a jerk. And, uh, well, maybe he was kidding. No, was he, he wasn't joking kidding. around? No, he wasn't joking around. Maybe he was trying to get laid. No, he wasn't trying to get laid because the By girl putting was... me down, he would get a girl. Uh, I don't think so. Is this Larry was... Amaros? No, yeah. not Larry. There's one more option. Gilbert, I want to say something. Yes. In your lifetime, yes. you should never say anything negative about me. I was one of the yes. few people willing to even visit you okay. in the hospital. Did, did you stop to think of the next option? What's the next option, Gilbert? That maybe this is someone who wants to get on the Howard Stern Show. Who? Me? No. Oh, yes. No, I, I don't need to get on. I just sit there. I, I buy Howard's videos. I, I watch the papers. So you videos. heard it. Did you confront Gilbert when he was saying this stuff? No, I just I sat there and I'm just shaking my head like, oh, here's somebody who uses Howard on the air. But then again, when it comes down, you know, deep down, he can't, he can't stand up and say, yeah, I listen to Howard Stern. I like his so, show. I go so on. So I think I like Howard is rude and crash, you're saying. I think he's rude and I think he's a jerk. And his sense of, you were talking about the type of sense of humor and really not being your type of sense of humor. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Girl, yeah. And the girl were sitting there and saying, right. <laughs> "Who cares?" You know what, Gilbert? I know that you couldn't. You'd have to be inhuman to badmouth me after all uh, the good friend what? I've been. What? Did what? I come through with you when you were sick? Did yes. he get yes. you a thermometer? Did I get you? A, well, I didn't get him a <laughs> thermometer. I did get him jammies <laughs> though. I, I like no. I like the part about rude and caress. Yeah, I, like, I don't, yeah, I'm offended, Gilbert. I'm not even going to respond. That's yeah. only hearsay. Your humor is not his humor. Yes. It's not my type of humor, the type he does. Uh, we're going to ignore that yes. and pretend it never yes. happened. It was very ugly, Robin. Yes. Uh, it was an ugly, ugly thing. First of all, let's mention that Gilbert Gottfried is going to be at... Um, if we get any more of these reports. Yeah, oh. yes. one more report, yes. though, and yes. I'm going to take it seriously. <laughs> He'll be at Caroline's April 6th. He's uh, currently the voice of Beetle in the feature film Thumbelina, who he's also seeing, Thumbelina. He's yes. dating her. <laughs> He'll also soon be heard again as the parrot in Disney's directed video, The Return of Jafar. April 4th, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. But uh, you'll, you'll see a great uh, act if you see uh, Caroline's April 6th. Gilbert is a scream. And USA up all night. But mm. that I walk through. Right. Yeah. You hardly put any energy <laughs> yeah, into that. Yeah, I don't put enough effort into that. Also, um, let's um, mention Jackie. <laughs> Jackie Platinum Joe Page Martlin Gilbert. Uh, yeah. To order Jackie's new comedy CD live at the Philadelphia Funny Bone. I have a new CD! 
Only $10 plus $3 shipping and handling. Call 1-800-323-5464. Saturday night, it's the Jackie Show, April 16th at Historic Club Benet in Sayreville, New Jersey. It's very different when you see Jackie in that atmosphere. <laughs> For information, call 516-9221. The new Stuttering John album titled Stuttering John will be out April 19th in record stores everywhere. And to get on Stuttering John's mailing list, call 609-546-STUPID. Also, our oh. friend Stephen Baldwin. Having his pool tournament at the Hollywood Athletic Club June 21st. Pool Aid 94 meets Steve and, of course, Luke Perry. Two guys who have no trouble getting laid. Nah. <laughs> and also, we have a new movie coming out from Steve and called Threesome. Fred the Elephant Boy will be, at the, will be the referee this Saturday night, the Superstar Wrestling Night at the Northeast Auto Outlet in Philadelphia. And if you're planning a wedding or party and you need a great dish jockey, call Scott the Engineer's Rocket Entertainment toll free from any city at 1 800 Party MC. And if you'd like to hire Scott in the New York area, call 718 Bag 5040. Well, that's it. There's a yeah. uh, review of Yoko Ono's new musical. How bad is it? Today. Robert, is this today's show or are you going on to tomorrow? I'm doing tomorrow's now. Yeah. They just say mostly it's just really simplistic. Bad. They gave it a bad review? That's all yeah. I care about. If she gets a good review, I'm leaving the country. <laughs> They invited me to come down there and see for myself that Yoko's new play is really an important play. And I said, no, nah, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. It has an anti-violence and anti-drug message. Oh, and who wants to see that? That's original. That's boring. <laughs> so she's against violence and drugs. Pretty controversial. Yeah, she's taking a stand. But there is a horny widow masturbating in the bathtub. So. I'll be there. <laughs> How do I get tickets? <laughs> is she naked? First row. <laughs> All right, Robin. I'll see you tomorrow. 97.1. Hi, 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 Robin. I'll see you tomorrow. 97.1.